Hello, my name is Kent Trammell. Welcome to this follow-up tutorial of the topiary exercise, where I will show you how I created the rhinoceros. Now, uh, I've been keeping an eye on the exercise gallery and want to thank those of you who have submitted images. It's really cool to see several different techniques being used, some of which are more believable and seemingly true to plant anatomy, others are more stylistic, and uh, the technique in this video is to produce more of a highly detailed topiary. In fact, it could be argued that this level of detail is a bit overkill, but uh, I'm more interested in creating an authentic 3D representation rather than simply approximating it. So uh, in Blender, we're going to get started with a pre-made model. Let me just unhide this. Uh, this model is the rhinoceros shape that will be governing the overall form of our bush that makes it a topiary. And this is a very simple model that I sculpted out of a sphere uh, using dynamic topology where I don't care about triangles versus quads. All I care about is the form itself. And I didn't waste time dealing with uh, fine details at all because being a topiary, the details will be washed out. But uh, I'm hoping to get lucky around the face uh, so we can possibly make out some nostril shapes, uh, an eye, or well, two eyes, I guess, on both sides, and also a mouth crease. I'm hoping those might show up in the topiary, but a uh, slim chance. And uh, in the end, this geometry will not be rendered at all. It will only be used as a guide throughout this entire process. And uh, in order to make my life easier, the geometry is one solid piece and it is watertight. This was ensured, again, by sculpting from a sphere with dynamic topology. Even though you can do a model that has multiple pieces, the process is more streamlined if you can make it one solid piece like this. So uh, once you have a model, you can use this one or use one of your own. Uh, we're ready to focus on the bush itself. And let's take a look at some images that I have so we can acquaint our minds with the structure of a bush, which may seem obvious, but uh, once I actually started thinking about it, some things made more sense that weren't so obvious. For example, uh, the leaves only grow on the outer edges of the bush structure. Whereas uh, when I first you know, thought about topiaries, thought about bushes, I kind of think that the entire volume is made up of leaves, but that's not the case. As we can see in this image, um, it's very dark within the volume of the bush. So uh, you know, without sunlight, leaves wouldn't be able to survive, but something has to hold this bush together. And that is through a network of branches like we see here. And then I have another image uh, with a topiary in silhouette with what appears to be some uh, bald spots at the bottom of the bush where we can see the network of a trunk with branches within the volume and the leaves are simply growing on the outer edges. And this is what I want to recreate in Blender. Even though, um, let's say if the bush was really far away in the background like this, I might be able to get away with just adding a particle system on the outside of the geometry. Um, that's not actually how a bush is constructed or how a topiary is constructed. So if I wanted to be closer and just more authentic to a bush, I'm going to have to create this internal structure of branches. And I'm going to do this with a built-in add-on called IVGen. And it's included with current Blender versions, but we'll have to enable it. So um, let's jump into the user preferences, into the add-ons panel. And in the search bar, let's type in IV. And you should see Add Curve IV Gen. Let's uh, enable that add-on. Close out of user preferences. And the way that this add-on works is uh, if I click to adjust the position of my cursor, uh, the default behavior in Blender is to snap the cursor to the surface of geometry. So that works good in conjunction with IV Gen. Um, so if I you know, click at this point on the mesh, and hit Shift A to add a new piece of ivy. It can be found in the curve menu all the way at the bottom called Add Ivy to Mesh. And we can see that that ivy is added very quickly with um, the entire structure of branches as well as leaves where it conveniently uh, grows along the surface of the geometry that we have selected when we add it. And then down here in the bottom left, 
or the very bottom of the tool panel, we have a plethora of settings that only exist immediately after we add the piece of ivy. For example, if I choose to move my rhinoceros and then Alt-G to move it back to the original place, you'll notice that we don't get those settings anymore. So be aware of that. Now let's delete the ivy as well as the leaves. And uh, let's add that again. Shift-A, Curve, Add Ivy to Mesh. And uh, we're able to adjust these settings now. I suppose we'll just go down the list, starting at the top where we have Update Ivy. And we'll need to click this anytime we change something. So in the Generation settings, let's change the random seed. And you'll notice that nothing happens uh, until we click Update. So anytime we change a setting, be sure to click Update. And then we have Add New Ivy. This allows me to add a second piece alongside the first one during this same operation. So uh, add Ivy to click and add another one, but understand that the settings that we change will only affect this new piece. And then we have a third button over here called Add New Default Ivy. And to be honest, I've never actually clicked this, so let's do it and see what happens. And um, yeah, it looks like it kind of does the same thing as add new ivy. Um, all right, below that we have grow leaves, and this is a simple toggle. Uh, so we can turn off uh, leaf generation. If we update the ivy now, it's just the branches. And uh, even though it's extremely convenient that it will create the leaves, uh, you'll notice that it's simple flat planes, which have UVs where we can assign a simple leaf texture to it. Um, which is great, except that when we get closer to the IV, the fact that the plane is flat stands out a lot when rendered. Whereas I would like to have just a little bit of depth and dimension to the leaf. So uh, for this rhino topiary, I'm going to leave our leaves turned off. And then below that we have our generation settings. And the first one, random seed, this will simply um, randomize the overall look of the generated ivy with each number being different. Below that we have maximum time. And this is a way to optimize our ivy generation because depending on how we have all of these settings um, set up and interacting with one another, the ivy generation can take a while. For example, um, in our branch probability, which is basically the density and how many branches are going to be created, uh, if there's a lot, you know, that takes the computer a while to calculate. And I know when I was exploring this technique, um, some of my IV generations could take as long as, you know, three to five minutes. So with this maximum time setting, we can uh, police how long the computer takes to generate the IV. I'm going to leave that at the default zero, which is disabled, as we can see in the description. And below that we have size settings with max IV length being the first one. And if we read the description, it says maximum IV length in blender units. And this one's pretty self-explanatory. If I double the value from one to two and update the IV, you can see that um, each branch simply doubles in length. But what you'll also notice is once the IV reaches the peak of our geometry, the branches don't really know what to do. Whereas um, when they're below the peak point of the geometry, they all stick very close to the surface of the mesh. But when it gets all the way up here, there's nowhere higher to go. So they kind of spread out and get really messy up there. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. We have a few that try to grow down the other side of the um, hump on our rhino's back. But uh, as we you know, mess with this length. If we increase it, let's double it again to four and see what happens. First, you'll notice that it took quite a bit longer and uh, our vines really get messy up at the top and extremely complex and spaghetti-like. So uh, that's the max IV length setting. Let's take that back down to a value of one. And now for IV size, this does not have to do with the diameter of each of our branches. But instead you can think of this uh, similarly to the way you think of the noise texture, the size of the noise texture. And if we read the description, it says the length of any ivy segment in blender units. So a segment, I believe, consists of these jagged segments that we see growing along the vine. So if I double the ivy size from 0.02 to 
update the ivy, you'll notice that our segments got a lot bigger and it's not quite so jagged. And if I go smaller, let's go to 0.01, now our IV is very jagged and consists of finer details in the branches. So that's how I recommend you thinking of that setting is uh, higher detail versus lower detail. So perhaps it's better to think of this as the detail size of dynamic topology. Let's put that back at the default, right click, choose reset to default value. Now for the max float length, let's first read the description. The maximum distance that a branch can live while floating. This one's pretty well explained by the description and uh, a shout out to the developer because each of these settings has um, very intuitive descriptions. It's documented very well. And uh, this max float length has to do with the branches that leave the surface, like this branch right in here, where it touches the surface in this section, but then it breaks off and then it comes back to the surface over here. So this max float length is what governs how much of the vine is able to float away from the surface before it needs to come back and connect with the surface of the geometry. So uh, let's remove that um, grease pencil layer, which actually got rid of my Ivy generation settings. Um, so that's okay. I can simply delete this. And when I hit shift A to add another piece of Ivy, You'll notice that it's grayed out because I need to select a piece of geometry first. Now I should be able to add this ivy and it inherits the settings that were last used. So if we zoom in here, this is exactly what I saw earlier before I broke the operation. So let's go back to the max float link. I will double this from 0.5 to 1. And you can see now how this piece that's floating above the surface um, has more length and more leeway to float away from the surface. And if we continue increasing this, let's see what happens at a value of two. And as you might expect, uh, there's more distance for this vine to grow away from the surface. If we go lower, let's reset to the default value and go to 0.1. Now you can see that the ivy sticks very, very close to the surface at all times. Let's reset that back to the default. And the next setting is max adhesion length. This kind of behaves like the inverse of the max float length, where um, the adhesion length, we are governing the length of each branch that has to stay stuck to the surface. So let's update this first without changing any settings. And then we'll double our adhesion length from one to two. And you can see that this has a similar effect to decreasing the max float length. The vines are sticking much closer to the surface. If we increase that again to a value of four, they are still staying uh, very close. Now if we turn it down below the default, let's go to 0 0.5, we uh, don't see much of a difference. It basically seems like it does the same thing as if we just changed the random seed value. So um, one thing you'll realize about these settings is that they all affect one another. So it's kind of difficult to go one by one and show you exactly what that setting changes because the max float length and max adhesion length sort of depend on one another. And then beyond that, they also depend, or at least the adhesion length depends on the adhesion weight down here. So um, these settings are something you have to get used to and um, just through trial and error, understand the effects they have on each other. But I will reset that back to the default, update the ivy, and move on to our weight settings. The first one is called primary weight. And if we read the description, it's weighting given to the current direction of the ivy. So this goes back to the fact that um, ivy gen wants to force the ivy to grow upwards into the highest peak of the geometry. As I've mentioned previously, this is the hump of the rhinoceros's back. And as we saw with the max ivy length setting, once the vines reach the peak, it uh, doesn't really know where to go, so it gets messy and tries to stay in that concentrated area. And this primary weight setting controls how much the vines want to get to the peak of the geometry. So let's try increasing the primary weight from 0.5 to, um, let's double it to a value of one. Update the ivy. We don't see too much of a difference except that 
the undulation in the vines seems to kind of stretch out and become more smooth. So what if we change the primary weight to two? And yeah, even more so, it just seems to stretch the branches towards the peak of the geometry. Now let's go below the default and go to, let's say, 0.25, cut it in half. Now we start to get uh, some weirdness, actually. Uh, oh, it seems that my cursor is kind of hanging off in the space around the geometry rather than stuck to the surface. So let's try to update that again. There we go. As you can see, it's pretty important for the 3D cursor to be stuck to the surface. But you can see that the jaggedness of our branches increased because it's not trying so hard to get to the peak of our geometry. And if we uh, continue going down, let's say primary weight to 0.05, now there's hardly any uh, force to make it grow towards the peak. So it just sort of sits um, close to its origination point and entangles itself. So uh, that's it for primary weight. Let's reset that to the default value. Now for random weight, before I change that setting, let's update the uh, vine. And for random weight, let's read the description. It says weight given to the random direction. So uh, just in reading that, uh, it kind of makes me think that by changing this value, the vine, instead of growing towards the peak, maybe it'll grow around to the side or maybe even down. Let's see what happens when we double it from 0.2 to 0.4. And uh, that just seemed to have a similar effect to lowering the primary weight. What if we keep going to 0.8? Yeah, that pretty much has the same effect. It gets very jagged, but it still just sort of entangles itself at the origination point. What if we go down? Uh, let's see, I think 0.2 was the default. Let's find out. Yeah. Let's go to point one. Yeah, so this seems to just be kind of the inverse of the primary weight, where um, with the random weight at a lower value, point one, it just stretches out and becomes less jagged in the branches as it approaches the peak of the geometry. So let's reset that back to the default and move on to gravity weight. This is pretty self-explanatory, weighting given to the gravity direction. So um, this also should behave similarly to lowering the primary weight value. Let's try by, um, well, first let's uh, update the IV to more of a default setting. There we go. Now change the gravitational weight to, uh, let's go to a value of two. And you can see that it, it um, kind of simulates gravity pulling these vines to the ground which uh, spread out the vines a little bit. What if we continue increasing the gravity weight? Let's go to four. And uh, yeah, it still tries to pull it down, but um, I'm not seeing it grow down, which is something I, I feel like I would expect to see from gravity weight to where the vines would start growing down kind of like this. Let's uh, try increasing it one more time to a value of eight, which at this point, you know, it might be such a high setting that it we get a very strange result, which we don't. It's, you know, still very similar to uh, changing the primary weight and lowering that value. So um, these three kind of work together and against one another. But um, I haven't tried lowering the gravitational weight, which the default is at 1. Let's change it to 0.5. Yeah, very much the inverse. It just um, stretches out towards the peak. So um, let's set that back to the default value of one. And now adhesion weight is uh, very different from these other ones. It corresponds to the max adhesion length, which states uh, that this is the maximum distance that a branch will feel the effects of adhesion. And where we set um, how powerful the adhesion is, is this adhesion weight setting. So let's increase that, um, double it from 0.1 to 0.2. And uh, that really pulls these vines very close to the surface of the geometry. What if we decrease that to 0.05? Now there's very little adhesion and the vines have more freedom to uh, grow away from the surface and give a more um, random appearance to it, more messy. So uh, we'll reset that back to the default. And below that, we just have two more settings. Let's update the geometry or the IV before I address those settings.
branch probability is very much the density of our branches. So um, at 0.05, you know, we have this level of density. If we uh, increase the value, that means there's higher probability of branch formation, which means more branches will be formed. So let's change that from 0.05 to 0.1. And you should be able to notice that we have about double the amount of branches. But if we increase that to, let's say, 0.5, this should take longer to generate, which it does, but um, notice just how dense all of these branches are. Let's continue increasing that. Um, let's go to a value of one, where we should have a ton of branches. And surprisingly, no, we're not seeing many more branches than that. So that's a little bit surprising. What if we lower this now, reset to the default value and 0.05, let's Cut it in half to 0 0.025. Update that geometry, or ivy, I mean. And uh, yeah, so that's um, fewer branches. Let's continue going down to 0 0.01. And that's even fewer branches. So you can see how that basically acts as branch density. Reset to the default, and then ivy branch size. This is where we actually increase the diameter of each branch. So first update the geometry to be default and then um, IV branch size 0 0.001. So it's, uh, its default is really low. Let's increase that. Let's double it to 0 0.002. And you can see how that uh, doubles the diameter of each uh, branch. And that's all for our IV generation uh, options. Uh, oh, except for a couple more. If I re-enable grow leaves, we have some additional options under leaf settings uh, to control those leaves that we're going to generate. So first let me, um, just for the sake of explanation, update our ivy to include leaves. And then um, they're very simple settings, uh, some that relate to our branch settings, ivy leaf size. This is where we can change the actual size of the generated leaves. Let's double it from 0.2 to 0.04. You can imagine what this will do. So we have bigger leaves and then um, let's reset that to the default and leaf probability is just like branch probability. They both act as density control. So um, first let's update the ivy as it was in the default with the leaves and now increase probability to one, which leaves us with a lot of leaves so much that um, we can see our viewport starting to slow down a bit. But uh, again, we're not going to be using the leaves for this rhinoceros topiary. And now that we've overviewed all of our ivy gen options, in the next video, I'm going to apply it to create the branch structure of our topiary.